This video brought to you by EquestrianCoach.com, the world's leading online video training site for equestrians. Hi, I'm Bernie Traurig and welcome to EquestrianCoach.com. This video specifically pertains to the seats one uses on course and not on the rider's position over fences. This topic is about how we utilize a variety of seats on course in all jumping disciplines and where they apply. What's important is that ideally one strives to master all seats. Eric Lamaze epitomizes forward riding. His preference for the half seat on Hickstead, a blood horse, suits him perfectly. It's crucial to develop proper balance in the stirrups the two-point exercise, which leads to the all-important ability to be effective and as comfortable in the half seat as John illustrates here. All the riders shown on this video have mastered all seats. Some have developed a preference to be closer to the saddle than others, and vice versa. Generally speaking, we utilize four seats on course, with an infinite degree of variations in between. Hip angle, upper body angulation. Throughout this video, I speak of the many variations in hip angle that the upper body or torso assumes at various gates and speeds. The half seat, otherwise known as the galloping or jumping position. In this seat, the rider's seat bones are normally out of the saddle and the rider is completely balanced in the stirrups. This seat has many variations of hip angle and elevation of seat bones in relation to the saddle. The half seat is my default seat on course and I wouldn't be alone with that philosophy. Many have taught that the rider should sit or sink closer to the saddle within four strides of the jump. The truth is we see both. Riders who are comfortable and secure with their half seat in ideal situations on approach may often maintain it right to the takeoff unless they have a reason to sit deeper. When situations arise where the amount of leg needed may be insufficient in the half seat, sink down into your thighs and heels closer to the saddle or simply sit deeper. The light seat is a position where the rider's crotch or seat bones sink closer to the saddle and they may even make the lightest contact with the saddle. Balance still remains in the stirrups. The hip angle may remain the same as in the half seat or open or closed to some degree. Many prefer to use the light seat on a perfectly normal final approach to a jump as opposed to maintaining a half seat. This is really a personal preference and can be influenced by a number of factors. One's legs are generally stronger as we sink deeper. Some feel more secure in the tack. Some claim they see distances better and others say they can feel their horse better. The full seat is a position where the seat bones are entirely in the saddle while maintaining a long secure leg and heel depth. The hip angle varies in relation to the demands of the course. The full seat enhances the rider's leg strength and gives him more control of his horse when needed. This is not a seat I prefer in between jumps and long lines or as a default seat. There are some horses, however, that may require stronger aids and will need a deeper seat throughout the course. In the driving seat, the rider's whole seat is in the saddle, including the buttocks, and the upper body may even get behind the vertical at times. Mastering the driving seat may often come in handy in your equestrian career. It's what I call an emergency seat where the rider needs maximum forward influence over the horse, such as difficult spooky jumps, balky horses, or any unusual situation that requires maximum power. We're going to watch riders in three different disciplines, jumpers, hunters, and equitation in competition, and observe how they utilize the different seats and how quickly and smoothly they transition from one to the other. This is Rodrigo Pessoa on Let's Fly at a big Grand Prix in Wellington, Florida. I want to say that Rodrigo really demonstrates beautifully the use of all seats. Here in a long line, he's up in his half seat, allowing the horse to gallop. He's with the motion. 
Here we watch him sink a little deeper into a light seat. Here on a short, steady line, he's in a little bit deeper seat. Back up in his half seat again. Here you watch him sink into a driving seat here for the water, which this horse is very, very careful over the water and jumps very high, needs that support. In this very short four line, watch Rodrigo sink down into a full seat and open his hip angle as a combined effort. Both work together. Upper body comes back, opening the hip angle, and he sits deep and encourages his horse to come back to him. Here to make the time allowed, we're really galloping in a very forward seat, right on stride to this oxer. Stays forward in this line, no reason to sit. Transition slightly to a lighter seat right there, very, very tactfully and smoothly. Stays forward. And then we have a very scopy combination here. Back deeper there. Forward here. Five strides with the motion, sinks very lightly into a light seat again. Let's just study Rodrigo in slow motion a little bit. Watch his half seat here. Up quite high out of the saddle, full half seat. Watch the subtle transition into the lighter seat. As he gets a little closer to this obstacle, his upper body back and now catches up with the motion again at the last minute to be in balance with the horse at the takeoff. This is John French on Rumba, winning the USHJA Hunter Derby in Kentucky. We're not going to show John's whole round because it's pretty much all the same in a half seat. John loves the half seat. He very rarely sits in front of the jump, and if he sinks to a light seat, it's so subtle. It's in between a half seat and a light seat. It's a minor adjustment lower of his half seat but he very rarely changes it because he's comfortable in that position. If he has a reason to change, I'm sure he would. This horse is in front of his leg, beautifully taking him. Look at him standing up in his half seat, feeling no necessity to sink deeper in the saddle. On a confident horse that's brave and in a situation that doesn't require a lot of leg, John doesn't see the necessity to sink any lower in his half seat. He's quite comfortable remaining balanced in the stirrups high out of the tack. This is Zazu Hoffman winning the McClay finals on a horse called Ivy. Watch her through the whole course, and Zazu, like Rodrigo, demonstrates the use of all seats. Here she's up. There she sank a little bit. Up in a half seat again. Maintained her half seat the whole way, never sat, never sank. Up in a half seat in the gallop. Maintains it in the gallop. Held it the whole way, didn't sink to a light seat, didn't feel it. In the, here she sinks down full seat now on a tight turn to that little jump. Up light out of the tack again. Sinks down, of course, for the transition down to the trot. And beautifully demonstrated smooth transitions between the half seat, light seat, and full seat in an indoor ring in an equitation class. I hope this visual representation of all seats during competition by some of the world's best riders has given you some examples to follow and hopefully cleared up the mystery of to sit or not to sit.